Uh, yeah, hello, Year 10. It's Mr. Charrington. Um, this is the last piece of work I'm going to be sending you uh, on this uh, Year 10 portraiture project this year. Um, this is a piece of work for Mr. Greenwood's class and my classes. As always, we start with just remind, reminding ourselves what we're going to be trying to do, and that's on the um, sort of ongoing over the next few months, is just trying to refine an idea for our final piece. Uh, that is the mask, and it should be based on your expression photographs, your chosen theme, and Kirshner's work, as well as anything else in your book. So Mr Greenwood's class, for example, did a really good caricature page, and I imagine that might have something to do with their, their planning going forward as well. Uh, but for now, uh, another thing to remind you of is that the piece of work you've been working on recently is a mask research page, and so far you've done uh, some good annotation paragraphs, you found some interesting masks, you've even done some really cool 3D drawings of them, um, and uh, we will be putting that together as a page next term probably, but if you want to get ahead over the summer and put it together as a page and you've got everything you need to do that at home, then by all means go ahead and do that as an extension. Um, don't forget to consider a background and title too. However, if you don't have the things you need to make this a really good page, then by all means wait till next term. Just try and put those things aside, the printed images or the saved images online, uh, the drawings you've done and the annotation notes, and um, and and bring them back at the beginning of next term. We'll, we'll look at them together and work out how to put them into a good page. Okay, um, but for now we're going to move on. And we're going to move on to the um, piece of home learning you're going to do this week. And it's a bit of a one-off. Um, it's a figure drawing task, um, and another way of saying figure drawing is life drawing. Uh, so you might know that sixth form, for example, come in um, in the evenings in the spring term, and we get them a nude life model who comes in, male or female, and they pose in different poses, and the students can draw them or paint them. Um, and the idea of painting or drawing a nude person might make some of you giggle, certainly does the first time you go and do a drawing of someone who's nude. But actually what you realise quite quickly is what a privilege it is because all artists since the beginning of time have studied and depicted the human form in the nude mainly because that's how nature intended it. Um, um, history of art is littered with amazing classical famous paintings of um, nude men and women, not to mention all the sculptures and everything else. Um, but for the moment, before you get too carried away, you will be drawing people with clothes on, please. Um, so uh, looking ahead, an artist should cons constantly practice observational drawing. One way to do this is to draw people in different poses. Next, you're going to develop your sketching techniques by documenting your friends and family. Um, as you can imagine, you're going to be drawing to try and express pose. Uh, you're going to try different sketching techniques, different media, pen, pencil, charcoal, whatever you can find. Um, you're always going to be basing everything on your observation, you know, making stuff up. It's all about how you see it and how you record it. And lastly, there's no need to finish with tone, texture and detail. Um, sometimes actually it's just good enough just to show, show your understanding by using line. OK, as indeed this artist has here. And remembering that communicating proportion, posture, twist and weight is what we're really looking for here. Notice that this artist hasn't worried about making the wrong marks occasionally. There's quite a lot of wrong marks here. Um, but they're not rubbed out. They're just worked over. And that's because ultimately this artist is aiming to try and communicate the posture, proportion, uh, movement of this person. Right, we'll think about a few different techniques you can use, a few different styles of drawing to help you uh, experiment this week. So continuous line is one that you'll have tried probably in Key Stage 3, maybe even in Year 9. Some of you might hate it because it's quite difficult. At the same time, um, it stops you fussing and it makes you focus on what you're looking at as you're drawing it. And I think more often than not, we have quite interesting experiments and results. I really like the one on the left. I think it's really cool. Uh, another thing to think about is having some quick rough sketching. Uh, probably be the easiest way for a lot of you to do it without actually asking people to pose for you. Um, and I can imagine it might be uh, certainly the way I used to draw when I was younger. Um, you might just wait till 
I don't know, your brother's sitting down to play Xbox or your mum's sitting down with a cup of tea or something. And without them knowing, maybe, you might just sit and just start sketching down their lines as best you can. At some point, they'll move um, or discover that you're drawing them and they might not like that. So you can ask if you think that person is patient enough and happy enough to sit for you. Um, Alternatively, you'll just have to work fast. Either way, you hope they don't notice your drawing until you've got some down on paper. Um, Single line looks great, but it's hard to do. So try other techniques first because it can be really quite difficult. Um, And any wrong line can uh, compromise the way the drawing looks. So for example, the drawing on the right hand side um, I think it's so slick, it's, it covers exactly how she's standing, but there is a line going through the middle of her nose from above, which I think might have slightly irritated the artist because it's not as pure as the other lines there. Either way, maybe save a single line until you've done a few others first. Okay, um, you might not have someone else nearby, uh, so you might just have yourself and therefore you can still do things. You could uh, either draw people on the internet Um, and there's going to be something coming up like that later in the PowerPoint. Or you could just draw some of your features, your feet, your hands, and so on, um, like these ones here. Um, Optionally, you could add basic tone. I know I said earlier don't, uh, don't don't focus too much on tone, texture, and detail, but I think if you're happy that you've got the lines right and you think it might help to add a bit of tone, go ahead, add a bit of basic tone. Don't get carried away. Don't try and perfect it and make it a finished piece. Okay. Uh, Similarly, using tonal contrast behind uh, or next to your figure might help. This is a famous Rembrandt drawing. And it's interesting how he's just used that little bit of shading on the left um, behind the model. And that makes the background darker and it makes her lit back seem um, more uh, in the foreground. So it gives you a bit of 3D form. All right, now here's what's gonna happen. This is the task itself. Um, You're gonna do some figure drawing. Uh, There's a video that I've embedded here, which I'll press play on in a minute. It's a guy called Chris, drawing from observation using a pen. And he's drawing uh, the woman in the corner. And every couple of minutes, she moves into a different pose. So listen to what he's saying, uh, follow what he's doing. Uh, You might get the idea before he gets to the end of the page. The video is about 10 minutes long. You don't have to watch the whole thing if you don't want to. But what you could do if you want is you could draw along with him. You could draw her while he's talking and listening, listen to what he's saying. Um, Alternatively, if you don't want to draw her, you could um, find some pictures online or find someone at home that you can draw. But this might be worth watching and getting an idea from. Either way, he makes the points about drawing to express pose trying different techniques and media, making sure you're always looking and observing. And there's no need to finish with tone, texture or detail. You can just uh, express the pose and position as best you can. So the task, have a go at drawing. You can draw with him or you can draw family and friends at home. Or if neither work, you can copy the link at the bottom and that brings up a video called New Masters Academy and it's basically people posing for one or two minutes at a time and then they move on. So you could draw them from your computer um, and then when they move on, you move on. So you might discover some of the poses are only one or two minutes long. That might feel very quick for you. So do a couple of them and then if you want to, find someone else um, and draw them for longer or just pause the video and then you can draw them as long as you want. Um, so I hope this helps, guys. I hope it's, I hope you have fun drawing some things, drawing some people. And please do send me and Mr. Greenwood some of your pictures. We'd love to see what you come up with. Don't judge yourself too harshly. Remember, we're looking at the pose and the proportions uh, more than we're looking at the face, facial expression or anything like that. Okay, right, here goes in the video. So I'll let it play. What up, what up? It's time for another live life drawing. Friday night, drawthis.com. One minute poses. I'm gonna try to talk to talk at the root of this. Ba, 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 ba. And whoops. S curve, head toe. 
exaggerate the gesture of the torso. Obviously, if you're drawing from life, I would recommend uh, a big old um, newsprint pad. These are the best, 18 by 24 inches. Okay. See how the gesture is the main idea? Let's see what we got here. Exaggerate the gesture. Send a line. Hesitated there. You know what? Seconds left, prioritize. I say torso first. Let's get that reading right. Right. I haven't drawn arms or legs, but you know they're there. <laughs> right? Just the indicating them, suggesting them is enough. Such a valuable exercise, oh my god. The time pressure is so valuable. Having this pressure, in my opinion, is valuable. Especially for the work I do. For the movie poster biz. For the work I'm doing now. Helps as a concept artist too. My past life, for sure. Okay, so I um, you tell me lay down the torso first because the main action to me was these arms. So I'm gonna start with little spaghetti strings. I don't even care about the hands, the thickness, the actions, what matters, telling the story, what the hell is going on, and then supporting my story. Now I have a little bit of time left. My priority is to support my idea, that initial movement, there it is, that's all I got. Okay, oh, I hate this part of the sketchbook. Up shot, just draw like a Coke bottle there, or a Coke can, it's basically a cylinder. There's a big old sweep this way. See that? Head to toe. But it's actually fingertip to toe. Whoop! Cut through the gesture. That's my idea. Let's support the idea. Let's see. Underplaying the rib, the pinch, abdomen, hip, direction of the hip, position, direction, same thing. Light bends suggest weight. Got less than four seconds left. That's all I got to do. Let's indicate that other arm. That's all I got. I'm not meant to do a finished drawing at this stage. Might have to 
uh, switch paper soon. Let's see. Yeah, we just bought a uh, slightly bigger sketchbook. Oh, she's a little bit bigger. Can't wait to break that out. Head to toe. Whenever possible, go head to toe. Straights don't exist, but I like them. Oh, it's not straight. Switch paper. This one uh, fits into an envelope nicely. Establish the torso. That hole is the insertion. Do that quite a bit. I really recommend it for new people. Uh, only reason I can do it because I have seen this position. <laughs> I can kind of guess, but. Um, Sort of a note to self that hey that's where the arm could go so Sneak in one more. Yeah, sneak in one more. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm climbing. Let's see what we got. It. For sure, there's this kind of thing happening there. So right now, this is an awkward angle. She's lying down, deep reclining. So I'm relying 80% on what I. Well, like 60% on what I see, 40% what I know right now. Such an uncomfortable position, which is good. I want as many of these as possible. Another reason why to go to life drawing, because you'll get some weird positions, especially if you uh, don't get the, uh, the best seat in the house, which is uh, front off center. That's where I'll be. You ever see me at a life drawing? I'll be front row, off center. Thank you for watching this video. In the next video.